we will probably take him out to a, a nice restaurant afterwards. We will work to honor this man because he has a place of position. Well, there's a way that we can honor God too. Now, God doesn't have an ego problem or anything like that because he, after all, made everything and knows everything already. But it does us good to honor him, to give him proper place in our lives. And uh, in Proverbs 3, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase. That is what God has enabled you to obtain. Those, those nice things he's enabled you to obtain. He says, I don't want all of them, but do show some honor, will you? So he enables us to give unto his kingdom. Because Jesus said, if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. So when we give, we're, we're giving into his kingdom. And we need to look at it that way. We're giving to him. We're honoring him. And so it says, sow your barns. He gives us a little incentive. He, he knows how we operate. So he says, your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And you know, new wine is not only new wine, but it's also a type of the Holy Ghost. Would you like to be overflowing? Well, <laughs> <laughs> then getting it, get into the giving mode. <laughs> Amen. We have many ways you can give today. You can text any amount to the number 84321. You can give online. You can give to the Church Center app, or you can mail in to the P.O. Box 307. But we're going to go ahead and bless it. So go ahead and get your gift in your hand. Father, as we give today, we are believing you for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid, expenses to decrease and increase and blessing. Thank you for meeting all of my needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you for giving me more than enough so that I can give to your kingdom and advance the gospel of Jesus in my city, my nation, and the nations of the world. In Jesus' name, so be it. Bill, if what Bill's saying is true, I might need to stop giving. I don't know if I can take any more. <laughs> got more capacity, you think? Oh, wow. Wow, wow. <clears throat> what a day. <coughs> what a day. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to take just a moment, mention a couple of things. 
Um, thank you, Bill. That was wonderful. That's been in our heart for actually several months now and just getting things aligned and had a date to start that today right after Easter. So that was just so amazing. It's going to be such a gift to hear some wisdom on giving from a senior elder in the house. So we're so thankful for that. Um, so thankful for um, our staff. Uh, our staff is the best staff I've ever seen anywhere. And they are so phenomenal. Um, thankful for the video announcements that's been on in works for a little while and and uh, excited about that and just continuing to grow in that to where um, we kind of make sure we don't miss things and it's planned out and prepared and we know how long it's going to take and nobody gets nervous <laughs> and if they do we edit it <laughs> and so it's great you know so we just get to the point. It's wonderful. And uh, something you'll notice uh, outside in the foyer, uh, there's, a, there's a board out there that, that it's on the left when you're exiting, and it says Ecclesia, something to that degree. I, I, I thought before first service, and I didn't do it, and then I thought between service, and I didn't do it. But we could have took a picture. And you should put it up so I could reference it. But there's a board out there, um, and it says Ecclesia over it. And there's a map of the greater Knoxville area. And what we would love to happen on this map is for us to see what type of uh, reference we have uh, in the greater Knoxville area, what kind of ecclesia outreach we have. We just want to want to be able to agree with God in prayer and, and make sure we're equipping and empowering uh, the ecclesia that is, is Redemption Life Church and all of its members and influence. And so there's three pins, and there's one for work, one for school, and one for your home. And if you would just go and put that color pin into the place that is yours, that would be awesome. And uh, obviously, you don't need uh, multiple pins. Like, we don't need 12 pins at my house. Uh, one will suffice for us to know what's happening. And so, put the pin in there. Use the right color. We just want to see where all the tentacles of Redemption Life Church go into our city and surrounding areas. And so we can be even in prayer of how we um, just empower that reach and even inform us on potentially how we enlarge into the 10 cities in 10 years that God has called us to. And so please partner with us in that. Also, right beside that, is a, is a board, and, and it has the passage there that says, be good to the brethren, especially the household of faith. And so this board uh, has a little place for business cards, and so we just think, you know what? If you're going to get your grass mowed, why would we not let someone mow the grass that we know is a believer and we can give that money to someone who believes in honoring God with that money and it just is it just makes sense so let's be good to the brethren especially the household of faith and so if you have a business or work at a business that um, you would like to be represented there um, we would like for you to just print off maybe 25 cards and just keep an eye on them. If they get gone, put some more out there. But there's places to put business cards. And so as for everyone that attends Redemption Life Church, we, we want to make that available for you to represent your business and, and let people know 
what you do and what you're a part of so that we can um, uh, just be wise with what God's entrusted us with and give opportunity to our brethren, especially those that we are in the household of faith with. And so take advantage of that. Last thing, actually there's two more things. Uh, we'll send out a message about this because we, I, we failed to get this um, in the first service announcements. Only thing about the video announcements, occasionally we come up with one that was not prepared when very rarely because we don't like to announce anything that's not at least two weeks out. But as we scan the dates, we just could not find another date. So we had to make this announcement last week and then we will again today. And then this meeting is tomorrow evening at 6.30 here. Dinner is included, but we are meeting about give. Now it's formally known as, the artist formally known as give a kid a chance is now give a student a chance because we found that it's difficult to translate give a kid a chance to high school students. So we've ixnayed the give a kid a chance because we want high school students to come and be a part. So now it's give a student a chance and little kids don't care. They don't feel excluded because their parents are the ones that sign them up and they know that their children are students. So it's fine. And so we, we, we have that event coming up. If you don't know what that is, every fall we have an event. Well, every fall, this is our second annual. Uh, yes, so every fall we have an event where we minister to children in our area right before they go back to school. It's the Saturday before school resumes. And uh, last year we helped 100 kids um, with everything they need before they go back to school. I mean, all their school supplies, backpacks, blue jeans, clothes, um, haircuts, tennis. Yeah, I was saving that one for last, but yes, Oil changes for people that needed oil changes. Um, and then we, every kid got a brand new pair of tennis shoes that they got to go and pick out. I mean, this was amazing. A hundred kids last year. And this is all because of our Buy a Tree, Change a Life event where we sell Christmas trees. And, and so we, we, were, we raised $10,000 and we were able to bless a hundred kids. And our goal this year was to raise $25,000 to bless 250 kids. I know, we're crazy. And, uh, and we were very close uh, to meeting that goal. We actually did raise the amount that we needed, but you know, when it comes down to expenses and all those things, uh, so we're in the process of partnering with some folks and trying to get sponsors and all those things. But, so this year we're going to minister to 250 kids um, we're in partnership with the uh, guidance counselors, social workers in the elementary, middle, and high schools here in Powell. And uh, so we're going that route and trying to get kids from those schools to make sure we're a resource to our local schools. But we also will expand that and broaden that into social media and all other venues. But we are trying to uh, steward well this assignment that God has given us, and so we don't want to wait and um, be too late to, to do with excellence what God has called us to do. So we're going to try to start early, and next year we'll start earlier than this because we'll be having to do a lot more because we'll be believing God for increase in what we're able to do. And uh, so we meet tomorrow evening, give a student a chance, 6.30 here, dinner will be included. Lastly, today is the deadline to sign up for the Dominican Republic mission trip that's happening July 1st through the 8th. July 1st through the 8th. And uh, I think we've made the link where you don't have to pay immediately when you sign up. Now, a deposit was due today, but if you absolutely do not have that, 
um, we are believing God that anybody who wants to go, God is going to provide. And so we will partner with you and to see that happen. And so don't let that be a hindrance to you signing up to go. If you feel that it's in the heart of God for you to go, if you feel prompted to go, if you desire to go, sign up today, today. And uh, you can get there from our website, redemptionlife.net. Go to the website. You'll find a link there to sign up for the Dominican Republic trip. This is going to be an absolutely phenomenal trip. We're going to do all kinds of activities throughout the week, construction, evangelism, medical, dental, um, food, ministry. I mean, activities, fun, games, all kinds of stuff with children, with families, men, women. And then we'll conclude the week with a huge evangelistic crusade. And we've secured a, a, a large baseball field. And so we're expecting around 5,000 people to come to this uh, evangelistic crusade. And so we're going to see thousands of people saved, healed, and delivered. It's going to be phenomenal. So be a part, sign up today, amen. Say la. The word that John just released, she released in first service. And I would say that it did not take long for that word to produce fruit. As in about 23 minutes. I believe we've experienced increase in our time of worship today. Kevin and Brandy, it's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. If we have any guests and you got a little freaked out, I don't know, because we were having a lot of fun. Um, To that I can say, like, I mean, this wasn't some type of knee-jerk reaction today. This has been brewing. You just came in when it was bubbling over this morning. But I don't dare want to tell you if you come back, it won't still be bubbling over because I say we're never going to put the lid back on. feel like David, I will become even more undignified than this. Yeah. <laughs> Please let me become even more undignified than this. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's just as amazing right now as it was in first service when Jahan brought that word. And she's telling us to be in position. She, she, she called it a warning. I don't know if she used that language in this service or not, but um, she called it a warning just to be in position an alert, an alarm, a warning, be in position. She talked about being with the right people, being in the right place, doing the right things. And maybe some of y'all got tired while she was talking about all that. <laughs> See, I know her heart and I know what she's saying, but you know, sometimes we can think, oh my gosh, you mean the stars have to align perfectly. For God to be able to do something with us. Hello? <laughs> but l 
let's look at the first verse that I was going to share this morning. Guys, just go to that first verse. Now the promise of entering into God's rest is still for us today. So we must be extremely careful. Doesn't that sound like it would need warnings and it would need alerts and it would need someone to get up and call your attention to it? Be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. So there's a promise that is for us today, and we must be extremely careful to ensure that we all embrace the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. It sounds a little bit restrictive on the surface, doesn't it? I mean, we have to be real careful. Kind of sounds like that where they take the narrow gate and the narrow way and they make it sound very difficult, right? Be very careful. You know what the huge burden that we must bear to see the promises of God realized in this season? The huge burden that be in the right place, be with the right people, be in the right position, be in our, you know, the huge burden that it takes to do all those things? Believe. Because if you believe, you'll be in the right place, you'll be with the right people, you'll be in the right position. You just have to believe. So some things happen. Some of us, unfortunately, have heard things similar to this many times. We have the unfortunate reality, this is sad, but isn't it sad that being in church for a long time is an impediment to receiving the fullness of what God has for you? Well, when church wasn't about receiving the fullness of what God had for you, but church was about keeping everyone motivated and keeping everyone coming and keeping everyone giving and keeping everyone like hyped and emotionally charged, then it leaves people left empty and deficient because we make promises from us and not from God and we make pie in the sky and we do all these things and then so people feel disillusioned and shortchanged. And if you ever felt disillusioned or shortchanged in church, it wasn't because of God. It was because of someone presenting to you a false message that was not about God. Because literally that exact language is in Scripture. You never feel short-changed. The Passion Translation. You never feel short-changed with God. Even in difficulty, loss, struggle, you feel an increase of His presence. You feel an increase of his peace. You feel an increase of his love. And people that have walked through the most difficult of situations will tell you, I would not change it if I had to go back to how I knew him before. I know him now. So if your testimony is different than that, you've wrapped your faith up into something. And so some of us, unfortunately, have sat under some things that maybe even with the best of intentions, 
you know, blind lead to blind. And I don't want to be mad at people because they're blind because I, 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 I was and am partially blind even now because I, cause it says that I'm going to go from glory to glory and I'm going to see better every day, you know. So I hope all the people that I've led in my past come to a place of the fullness of the promises of God in spite of what I taught them. They had to do to get there. But we've heard things and we've attributed them to God and it's caused our consciences to be seared and now we're unmoved by the promises of God. It does not invoke faith. It does not invoke hope. It does not invoke anything. We're just unmoved with it. We just hear it and we just remain apathetic to it. And here's the reality. I don't know. Like, I don't know like what, you know, I don't think anybody ever knows. Or can know the fullness of the promise. So even when Jahan presents a promise, you know, so we have to speculate. So as we speculate what she's speaking of and we make it look like a certain thing, and then we've decided what she's saying, even though it's not what she said, and then it doesn't happen the way we made it that she was going to say, and then we're able to say at the end of that, I told you it wasn't going to happen. Do I believe the word she shared today is not just a word for me and her and our family? Do I believe it's a word for me and her and our family? Absolutely. And it's not something that is coming and now is. It's something that is coming, now is, and has been now for several weeks. So hear a testimony from someone who's got maybe a jump start in this. It is real. But is it just for us? No. Is it for our church? Yes. Do I believe it's bigger than us and do I believe it's bigger than our church? Do I believe it's the heart of God for the world right now? Yes. How is that going to manifest? How is that going to look? How is that going to come about? I don't know. And I can't determine all of that or dictate all of that. I just have to stay in my place of believing that the fullness of the promises of God is coming to the earth, but I'm only, con it's coming to me. Because there's times in the past, you know, it's like we like to just make it so mystical and weird, you know, like why was there this outpouring here? Why was there this outpouring here? Why was there this outpouring here? Why was there this thing? Oh, was this going to be that? Was this going to be that? Listen, on the day of Pentecost, Peter said, this is that that was prophesied of the prophet Joe. And do you know what every awakening has been since that day? That. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is this that? Yes. And we try to say, is this the third great awakening? Is this the end time harvest? Is this the, uh, is this, this is that. It's the same that that it's always been. And the reason why that happens is because people believe. Yes. Oh, what did they do? They tarried. Why did they tarry? Did we tarry enough? Did we tarry? They believed. Their belief brought them into a place of tarrying. Sometimes your belief brings you into a place of going. <laughs> 
Sometimes you believe. Believe. And he'll order your steps in your belief. And you'll be in the right position and you'll be in the right place. So we think back over some things that have been significant in my life. Brownsville. That was that's cool, man. God did that thing down there. Wonder why he just wanted to do a thing down there. He didn't want to just do a thing down there. Just down there were the people that believed in the thing. And then people everywhere else just wanted to judge the thing. And so that thing didn't happen to other places. That thing is not restrictive to any place or location or time or season. And I'm not negating her word. I'm just confirming her word. It's just there's an awareness here like there hasn't been before of what he wants to do so then we can receive it now like we could not receive it before if we believe. God has been positioning us. God has been positioning us as individuals and as a body all across this room. He's been positioning you. And collectively, we are in a position collectively that we've never been in before. To see that, that he would want to do in this place, in our lives in our city, in our nation, and in the nations of the world. If only we would just believe. So some people will tune it out and say, I've heard this kind of stuff before. It's not going to happen. And then you know what? It's going to happen. Ten years from now, you'll have a testimony. I knew it wasn't going to happen. I told y'all it wasn't going to happen. My family are, is just as crazy as it's ever been. My kids are just as lost as they've ever been. It's act, they've actually gone downhill since then. My finances are worse than they've ever been. You know, I, I feel further away from God than I ever have. I told y'all there was nothing to that. It was just Jahan being hype. I mean, who wouldn't be hype if they were married to Michael? Of course, Shahan feels like God is good. <laughs> who wouldn't be hype if they had all those perfect children? Of course, they they think God's awesome. They live in a fantasy land. I mean, he works one day a week and gets paid. That's crazy. <laughs> but somebody will say, your unbelief is self-fulfilling prophecy. And one day you'll reflect and you'll say, I knew it. I was right. I'm a, I'm, I'm a prophet. And somebody that sits three seats down from you, 10 years from now will say, I knew it. Yeah. I knew it before she even said it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. It's been stirring in me for weeks. I knew it. 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 And my life changed forever. Somebody's testimony, I knew it wasn't going to happen. Somebody's testimony, I knew it was going to happen. What's your testimony going to be? 
about this season. For you, for us, for the world. How big is our yes? Because there's a prophetic word that says your yes will be louder than that city's no in the past. And I believe if we could just have a yes, if we could just have a yes, even this small assembly right here, if we could have a yes, we could have a yes that would outweigh all of the collective no's of this city because we believe. And I wanted to take you out through some scripture. Be extremely careful to ensure that we embrace all the fullness of that promise and not fail to experience it. For we have heard the good news of deliverance just as they did, yet they didn't join their faith with the word. What's going to be the difference between the two testimonies? One of you is going to join faith to the word, and one of you is going to join fear to the word, and one of you is going to see it come about, and the other one's going to run from it and wonder why it didn't happen. Instead, what they heard didn't affect them deeply. Now, now, I didn't make this sermon because of Jahan's word. This sermon was the sermon for today, and Jahan didn't know what the sermon was for today. Sometimes we may have the slightest conversations, but Jahan, she like rebukes me. She wants to hear it when y'all hear it. But more this time than ever before because we've been crazy this week. We didn't even see each other today. We just text this morning from our different locations. I kid you not. I didn't see her till I saw her here. And I sure did love seeing her. I saw her. I mean, that just got me all distracted right now. Ooh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> What they heard didn't affect them deeply. How deeply has what you've heard today affected you? For they doubted. For those of us who believe, though, faith activates the promise. I knew it wasn't going to happen. I never even received that promise. You never activated that promise. And we experience the realm of confident rest for he has said, I was grieved with them and made them a solemn oath that they will not enter into my rest. God's works have all been completed from the foundation of the world for it says in the scriptures and on the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again, as stated before, they will not enter into my rest. Those who first heard the good news of deliverance failed to enter into the realm of faith's rest because of their unbelieving hearts. Yet the fact remains that we still have the opportunity to enter into the faith, rest, life, and experience the fulfillment of the promise. For God still has ordained a day for us to enter into called today. For it was long afterwards that God repeated it in David's words, if only only today you would listen to his voice and do not harden your hearts. Now, if this promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people into the land, God wouldn't have spoken it later of another rest yet to come. So we conclude, we conclude that there is still a full and complete Sabbath rest waiting for believers to experience. The promised land is more than just a piece of real estate. It is faith in Christ and his finished work that brings us into this incredible promised land called rest. 
In the Old Testament, the promised land was a place, but in the New Testament, the promised land is a person. Everything that flows from our lives is a result of him working in and living his life through us. In him we live and move and have our being. It's no longer us who lives, but it's Christ who lives in us. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. We are utterly dependent on him. Without him, we can do nothing. But with him, I can do all things. Because he is the vine in John 15, 5. And we are the branches. And in him, those who remain in him bear much fruit. For apart from him, we can do nothing. Verse 10. As we enter into God's faith, rest, life, we cease from our own works just as God celebrates his finished works and rests in them. He shows us what to do when you're done. Come on, man. This God. Whoa. So then we must be eager to experience, eager, 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 eager to experience this faith rest life so that no one falls short by falling to the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. Somebody break out of the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. Please. Dude, when Jehan was talking about the reaper overtaking the sower today and your head spinning, you know what I saw? Whack-a-mole. That's what it's about to be, whack-a-mole. It's going to be popping up all over. But we're going to sack a mole. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, 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 mm, 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 oh, sack a mole. <laughs> sack a mole, mole like in more. We're going to sack a more. <laughs> sack a mole, 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 sack a mole. Just water. <laughs> now, it may not seem like it, but it is just water. The only requirement for entering into rest is faith. Yes. When we truly believe and trust him, we will rest. When we rest, God will work. When we work, God will rest. You know why our harvest has been meager? Because we've been the ones that have been planting and tilling and sowing, all that. We've been doing our thing. And that, at its best day, does not compare to the harvest that can come when we realize that he is the sower. He is the cultivator. He is the tiller. And when he does it, it's (laughs) whack-a-mole. Life becomes a whole lot easier when we learn to trust the one who has never failed. (laughs) Can you imagine not entering into something that has been finished from the foundation of the world because of unbelief? Like your little sin hijacked everything that's been done before the foundation of the world? Wow, you must be real bad. They did not enter into the finished work because of unbelief. It is the revelation of the finished work that produces faith. The only requirement of the new covenant is that you believe. Everything that you do from there on is a result of what you believe. Right living, right placement, right alignment, right everything Jahan's talking about flows out of right believing. 
Verse 11, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. There it is again. Be real careful and, oh, let's labor. I knew there was going to be a catch. He's been all fired up and acting like this is no big deal and everybody's going to get to get in on it. And then here's the punchline. I was waiting on the punchline. Every preacher does the punchline. Punchline. Let us labor, therefore. Now that we've got you all baited up for this amazing, restful thing, the punchline. <laughs> now go labor. You yet holding on? I'm yet holding on. I'm laboring. John 6, 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. This is your labor that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Yeah. Get busy laboring, yes. believing. Yes. This is not a license to become spiritual couch potatoes. It's not a license to sin and have no standard of living. If you received the word of rest and grace as a license to sin, you've probably been sinning for years without a license. Right? People look for a message that itching ears, you look for a message that condones the behavior that you're already doing. Grace does not give people license to sin. It empowers them not to. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. Let's pick it up in verse 12. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. There is not one person who can hide their thoughts from God for nothing that we do remains a secret and nothing created is concealed but everything is exposed and defenseless before his eyes to whom we must render an account everything is exposed and defenseless doesn't that sound exciting I want you I want you to think of this different than you've ever thought of it before we've already thought of labor different right now Defenseless. Defenseless. The word is not just any word. This word that's the two mouth sword is not just any word. It's the word that flows from rest. It's the word rest. It's rest word. The word that flows from rest will reveal what is really in a man's heart. Separating marrow from bone is separating mammon from Christ. It's going to leave you defenseless and open, and it's going to reveal your mammon system, which means you get to quit striving. You don't get to defend your striving anymore. You get exposed for your striving so that you'll embrace rest. <laughs> defenseless and exposed. He's going to come and make you stop doing stuff. Mean, mean God. <laughs> we must respond to what the Father reveals in our hearts and come to the throne of grace to receive mercy. And there, that it is there that we will find grace to help in our time of need. 
Let's pick it up in verse 14. So then we must cling in faith to all we know to be true, for we have a magnificent king, priest, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who rose into the heavenly realm for us and now sympathizes with us in our frailty. He understands humanity, for as a man, our magnificent king, priest, was tempted in every way, just as we are, and conquered sin. So now we draw near freely and boldly to where grace is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. So he exposes and leaves us defensive about, defenseless about our mammon system, our, all of our rules and all of our things that we think we can do to make God do what we think God should do. He exposes all of that and he shows us that we need to come into the belief in the finished work of Christ. And so he comes in with all of our mess and he gives us a sloppy, wet, mercy kiss. And it makes us forget about all that other stuff. Oh my gosh. I just, (laughs) I wish I could sing because right now I'd say, I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly. Explain that's your love, it makes me weak. (laughs) And when we're weak, he is strong. (laughs) Come on, we need to just bring our. We need to trade our strength for weakness in the face of him and let him kiss us with his mercy so that we can receive the revelation of the finished work of Christ. Woo, thank you. It is in this environment of grace and rest that we will find a faithful high priest who has been tempted in every temptation known to man, yet without sin. And because he now lives inside of us, he is able to conquer every giant that is in our land. Get ready, get ready. This was in my notes before Jahan's word. Get ready to live in houses you did not build and eat from the fruit of vineyards you did not plant. You are entering into another man's work, the work of Jesus Christ. Do not listen to the ten spies who always point out the giants and the walls and how big the enemy is and all the reasons why you cannot live in this promised land. Hear me cry aloud today. We are able to take the land. We are more, more, more than conquerors. He's a conqueror. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. (laughs) 
<laughs> there are many words that you could use to describe my relationship with Christ growing up. Some good, some bad. One word that you could never use to describe Michael Cox's relationship with God before he was 46 years old would be restful. So what, what, what was it <laughs> that's what was available? I'm thankful for my journey. I'm even thankful for my upbringing. Like I'm thankful for the Old Testament. Because it brought such, it revealed so greatly the deficit. It revealed so greatly the lack that it has made me, it has positioned me to be an absolute radical embracer of rest today. Maybe if my upbringing was different, I might be apathetic to rest. It may seem a lot like what I've always heard. It may seem like a lot of stuff, and I've just become familiar with it and used to it. Maybe that's some of y'all's position, but not for me. This is so dramatically different than everything I've held dear my entire life that it is so radical for me that I'm like a... Dog with a new bone. <laughs> you know, if you used to ask me, what do you believe? I'd say, well, uh, we don't believe in this. We don't believe in this. And I don't believe in that. And we don't believe you should do this. And we don't believe you should do that. And we don't believe you should do this. But I might have a real hard time coming up with what I do believe. We got to give people something to believe in. Not just a bunch of stuff to not believe in. We've let fear govern instead of faith. We've let fear convert relationship into religion because it's more easily manageable and controlled and predictable and way less free. So as long as we get three meals and a cot, we'll make bricks for the rest of our lives. But faith says, even if the waters of the sea close in on me, I'm going to follow the cloud across right now on dry ground. Even though I can't, I've never done it before. I don't know exactly how it works, and I don't know if there's a time limit. I don't know if I'm the 900th person if I drown and I needed to be the first, or if I'm the last. I don't know all the parameters of this thing. All I know is he's moving, and there's an invitation for me to go with him, and I'm going to
And only two out of 12 said, even if we die, I'm not stopping short of where he promised we could go. Sure, Caleb didn't know he was going to be 85 when he started the journey. What difference does that make? It's a number. Promise is still promise. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I don't care how long it took me to get here. Yes, it is. All I know is today it's right yes. in front of me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the promise today is the same as it was the first time I heard it. Yes. And so I can take it just as easily today as I could have took it back then. (laughs) Our focus must not be on the size of the giants, but on how big God is. Our focus must be on the size of the fruit in the land. There are grapes as big as your face. It takes more than one person to carry a cluster, and we will become a land flowing with milk and honey to the nations. I didn't say we get to partake of the land flowing with milk and honey. I said we become a land flowing with milk and honey. We don't get to the promised land. We become the promised land. As when we become one with him, the finished work. You know, there's something you just, I know we got to go, but just... I need to finish with this. I, I'm sitting in a wedding last night, and they're dancing, and uh, to some old hymns. I don't know all the songs, but I mean, you know, some of them say like to the left. To the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. You know that ungodly stuff. (laughs) And I watch people that love God, but yet live in a world that wants to beat your brains in and keep you from having any type of confidence or freedom or joy. And I watch those people have a little fun to the left. left. I watch them have a little fun to the right, to the right. And I start crying in this wedding while everybody's dancing. I mean, they probably thought, what is wrong with this guy? Thought, Lord, just let me feel his heart. Yeah. And he wasn't offended. He was actually really touched that his children were just overflowing with joy and pushing back. I mean, I watched from the youngest to the oldest. I watch people just, I watch them stand on the peripheral and then eventually get in and, you know, they're just, you know, but they just push past it and they're just having a little bit of fun. God forbid. (laughs) And I just remembered how evil I used to think that was. And how I would sit in a setting like that in a corner with judgment. And I would wonder how can these people have a godly ceremony and then come.
come in here and take four steps to the left and four steps to the right. <laughs> and smile and laugh and have fun together. Don't they know better? Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now, there's some people that would take this verse and they would use it to condemn what I'm saying right now. But I wonder why it didn't just say, woe to those that call um, bad things good. Woe to those that say you can dance and honor God with it, even if it's not out of the hymn. I wonder why it says just as emphatically and in the same exact thing, and means just and, it's the same. Woe to those that call bad good and those that call good. Woe unto us who have diminished the kingdom of God and restricted it down to this ridiculously small thing that does not allow for joy, freedom, passion, love, all the things that he so much wants to give us. so afraid oh we don't want to talk about we don't want it to be a motivational speech so we've got to talk about the gospel without motivation that's funny huh? <laughs> we got to talk about like there was absolutely no hope for you you were absolutely dead there was no way out someone else came paid the price for that and completely set you free but I got to tell you in a way that doesn't make you feel overly motivated. <laughs> you know, just, you know. So I got to add some things to it. He did all that, but you got to do, I mean, of course. You got to carry, carry your weight. You guys stand with me. I gotta let y'all go. <laughs> Quickly, Padre needs a mic. Nisi, would you come here just for a second? This morning, I want to water, I want to water the passion of your 18-year-old heart. It's full of passion. And there's a father in the house. I just want to, I get to speak for him every now and then. And I just want to water the passion of this 18th year because it's without pretense. There's no pretense in your passion. It's so pure. And I just water it today. Would you just extend your hand? Father, we just water the passion of Nisi Cox. This 18th year, her passion will grow full of expectation and full of anticipation. And everything she's even thought about, everything she's even had desire for, she will see it come to pass. We bless the passion of this 18-year-old heart. 
It's so full. And we thank you. They say there's not an ounce of pretense in your passion. And that's hard to find. And you carry a passion that I want every young lady to experience. Every young lady to experience. Because most of them never, because of what dad shared today, they, they're just held back. We free you to go. We free you to go. We free you to go. And be the girl that your dreams come true and your desires are fulfilled. Your dad's going to walk you down the aisle. You're going to hold your own child. It's going to be so beautiful. And we can't wait. We, I mean, we're going to, but we're anticipating already, expecting it to happen. And we bless you today in Jesus' name. Can we give God praise for the voice of the Lord? Amen. Um, I want to encourage you, if you haven't done it, to read the Song of Solomon in the Passion Translation and take it to heart. <clears throat> but... I feel impressed to read this to us and exhort us in this this morning. This scripture, when I caught it, was like, what? So I'm going to start with verse 9. For you reach into my heart. With one flash of your eyes, I'm undone by your love. My beloved, my equal, my bride, you leave me breathless. I'm overcome by merely a glance from your worshiping eyes. For you have stolen my heart. I am held hostage by your love and by the graces of righteousness shining upon you. How satisfying to me, my equal, my bride. Your love is my finest wine, intoxicating and thrilling. And your sweet perfumed praises, so exotic, so pleasing. Your loving words are like the honeycomb to me. Your tongue releases milk and honey. For I find the promised land flowing within you. The fragrance of your worshiping love surrounds you with scented robes of white. My darling, my bride, my private paradise, fashioned to my heart, a secret spring are you that no one else can have. My bubbling fountain hidden from public view. What a perfect partner to me now I have in you. Your inward life is now sprouting, bringing forth fruit. What a beautiful paradise unfolds within you. When I'm near you, I smell aromas of the finest spice. For many clusters of my exquisite fruit now grow within your inner garden. Thank you, Darlene. So much. John, Susie, and I just water your submission in this season. We just water your submission as a body. The submission that you're walking in in this season, we just water it because, well, listen, submit your ways to the Lord, and he'll bring it to pass. Not your will, not your work not your wants. You just submit it all to him and he's going to bring it to pass. I promise you he's going to bring it to pass. We just water your submission in this season right now. Would you stretch your hand this way? Father, we water the submission that John Cox is entering into that she doesn't have to worry. She doesn't have to wait. She doesn't have to wonder. You're going to bring it to pass, and she's going to know that without a shadow of a doubt, that what you've promised, you're also able to bring it to pass. And there won't be another doubt about it. There won't be another worry. There won't be another wondering. She won't have to have work it out and make it happen. We just water the submission of the lady of this house this morning. And we as a body are going to see it come to pass. We are going to see you bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Father, we water the heart of our pastor. We water the humility of this season. He's walking in humility that we've never witnessed. 
and we water the humility of our pastor this morning because it's time. He said, I will exalt you in due time if you'll humble yourself. If you'll humble yourself, I will exalt you in due time. It's time for me to exalt you in this season of humility. It's due season for you, Pastor. It's due season for you, Pastor. Oh, we water your we water the humility. We water the humility of the man of God that shares the word of God in this house to us. And we water it. And we know without a doubt, you said if we walk in humility at this level that he's entering into, that you will that you in due season will exalt us. Exalt the man of God in this house to be a voice to the nations. To be the father of many sons and daughters. We just water this invitation in the spirit this morning for your glory and your honor and your praise that we all can be free of pride. We all can be freed free of pride so we can enter into promise. Elias, is Elias here? Elias, come. We're going to water your innocence that you're standing in. Would you stretch your hand this way? Son, listen to me very carefully this morning. We're going to water the innocence of this season. As a congregation, we're going to water. You're going to stand in innocent. And what that means is, what that means is, he makes the call. He says not guilty. He's the one that makes the call. And if you understand that what it means is you don't get to make the call you don't have to make the call anymore he makes the call and you just walk out and walk out the innocence that he's claiming you're in so you're not guilty so it's just an invitation this morning we're watering the innocence that you're not guilty and what that means is the enemy keeps wanting to make you guilty he wants to keep making you guilty so you won't walk out innocence but what's going to happen in your life What's going to happen in your life is you're going to let him make the call. <laughs> you're going to be so walking innocence, free of guilt and shame and condemnation of your own life, not the lives of others. So nobody, it's just the own, own judgment of your own expectations. But what's going to happen this morning is you're going to walk in innocence. And then what that's going to do is invite you to let him make every call. Go, he's going to make the call. He's going to make the call. And everything he declares over your life is true. Everything he declares. When he makes the call, you're innocent, you're innocent. When he makes the call, so he's going to make it. You just got to let him make the call. You don't, it doesn't depend on up until this point, all your talent and ability he gave you. You're gifted. There's no doubt about it. You're anointed. There's no doubt about it. But you didn't do anything. You didn't obtain that on your own. Bam. He's inviting you. We water. Would you stretch your hand this way? We water. Allah has to walk in the innocence. Because of the level of anointing you want him to carry to a generation. Light Monday night, God, around a campfire, the song of the Lord came forth from a generation of Eliases that you're raising up for such a time as this. Innocent, says the Lord. Innocent, says the Lord. And now you just walk it out, Elias. You walk out in the freedom that you're not guilty. You're not guilty. You're not tied to any sentence. You're not tied to any uh, uh, any parole officer, so to speak, that's going to make you report to him for anything. God's making the call on your future. God's calling you to walk in innocence. And I've never said that to anybody. It's an invitation for you personally. It's more is Josiah in the house.
want you to understand something this morning. There's one thing that's going to be the, uh, the one thing that you can rely on. We're going to water the joy of the Lord in your life. We're going to water the joy of the Lord in your life. There's one thing you can rely on from now on the rest of your life. The joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. Everything you feel strong and mighty and powerful in is going to be because of the joy of the Lord. He's going to strengthen you in the inner man. And all that junk, all that junk that you're entertained before, you're not, it's not even going to, you're not even going to look for it. You're not even going to desire it. I need to whisper something. What's going to happen is the stuff, the junk, you're not going to have a desire for it. There's going to, no, well, you're going to be able to see it and know that it's not, we're, that's junk, that's junk, that's junk. And what's going to happen is the joy of the Lord is going to come into your life. And God is going to be so excited about making you joyful. He's going he's gonna to be so excited about bringing you joy. He's going to bring you joy after joy after joy after joy. I hate to say this, but I've got a feeling you're going to be happier than I've ever been. And I'm happy all the time. You're going to be more joyful than I've ever walked in, and I'm joyful all the time. Would you stretch your hand this way? The joy of the Lord is Josiah's strength. 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 The joy of the Lord is this young man's strength. And God let him represent all the other 16-year-olds on the planet. If you're 16, enter into the joy of the Lord. If you're 16, enter into the joy of the Lord and walk in it. We declare this over every 16-year-old. Enter into the joy of the Lord and walk in it. Let Josiah be the first, first fruits of a generation of 16-year-olds that enters into the joy of the Lord and walks it out. Happy is the man that has the God of Jacob for his help. And you don't ever have to doubt it. You're going to be so happy. You're going to be so joyous. And you're going to bring it. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to spread it. You're going to spread it. You're going to spread the joy of the Lord. You're going to spread the happiness of God, of trusting him with your whole heart. Not one time, Josiah, lean to your own understanding. Don't you do it, son. Don't you do it, son. Don't you do it. I've got a path for you. I've got a path for you. It is a path full of joy and smiles and laughter and happiness, says the Lord. Walk it out in my strength. There's a congregation. There's an invitation in a song. I'm trading my sorrows for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm laying it down. There's an invitation for all of us to lay down yesterday and say hello to today. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord that went forth in this service today. And Father, just you've bathed, we've bathed the Cox family. We bathe the Cox family today with agreement. And we ask now for everyone in this room, for everyone in this room, we're gonna, we're gonna lay it down. We're, we're gonna lay it down because what you have for us is so much more. We thank you, Darlene, for what you read over us. There's an invitation for each one of us, each one of us, each one of us in this room to lay that down for this, to lay that down for this, to lay that down for this, to lay that down for this. And we accept the invitation this morning and we're laying it down for the joy of the Lord, for the innocence, 
for the passion we can walk in, the humility can, we can walk in, the submission we can walk in as you spoke to the Cox family today. We all want to walk in submission. We all want to walk in humility. We all want to walk in passion. We all want to walk in innocence. And we all want to walk as the joy of the Lord being our strength. So we thank you for speaking to us today, individually to them, but corporately to us. And we declare it. Thank you for the word of the Lord. Thank you for the willingness in this house. And Father, we believe the willingness in this house is the ticket to all that you have for us. (laughs) Willingness is our ticket to all that you have for us. So bring it to pass for Jahan. Exalt Pastor Michael. Lord, I just make declaration over the Bradberries this, this morning that this is going to be the most fun and restful season they've ever had. The most fun and restful season and all that that means. And that both of their hearts, not just one, not just half of hers and half of his, but both of their hearts' desires will be fully satisfied by you. Things they didn't even know they wanted in this season, would you gift it to them? Would you just crown them and gift it to them because you're so delighted and pleased with them? In Jesus' name. So be it.